I've done a few videos on relatively average drivers in the past, like Marino Sato and Gilherme Semaya, and it's safe to say they've done pretty well. So here we are, back with another one, 10 minutes or so of me taking the mick out of an innocent driver. The guy we're talking about today almost made it into Formula 1 in 2013, despite not having any meaningful career results up until then. And he would have been the first ever Chinese Formula 1 driver, but missed out due to his team collapsing. And since then, he has hung around in touring cars in Formula E. But who was this guy? If you followed Formula 1 in 2012 or 2013, or if you watch Formula E, of course, if there are people who enjoy watching Dysons drive around oversized car parks, you may have heard of him. So here we go. With the help of the man himself, John Warren, let me take you through the story of Ma Qinghua. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly, else this whole video will be utter pain. China's first F1 driver. Almost. Ma Jinghua was born on the 25th of December 1987, which is reason one why he's the second coming of Christ. He's born on Christmas. You know literally nothing about his personal life since he hasn't posted on his Instagram in over a year, and he's tweeted three times since last July. But anyway, born in Shanghai, home to the Chinese Grand Prix and Sebastian Buemi's tyres, from an interview his racing career started from watching the racing on the TV at a young age. But then when he was eight years old, an indoor karting centre opened close to his house so he and his family went at the place. However, Ma was very scared to begin with, but after his dad literally told him to be a man, he started getting quicker and quicker, and that's how it started. Unfortunately, there's no actual record of his professional karting career, but we very helpfully know that he sat in a single-seater car for the first time in 2003, which he apparently found very cool. Tsinghua, thank you for that information. But anyway, he made his car debut in the 2005 Asian Formula Renault Challenge Series alongside Half the Grid with Asia Racing Team, racing 6 out of 13 races for the single most confusing racing championship I've ever set eyes on. Not joking, this championship scares me more than this cosmetic bee Sebastian Vettel is holding. To begin with, people know where 57 different drivers finished in all the races, one, only one driver finished all the races by the way, but don't know where they actually raced at. But the most scary part is the three different point systems, with point system A being the points they scored except rounds 1 and 2 because they apparently don't count. Point system B was their points of the best 10 results in that series, and point system C being actual standings. But the person recording these results seemed to have been on something since Ma apparently scored 35 points of the system of his best 10 races, and then 39 with the actual point system which just seems a little bit fishy when Ma competed less than 10 races. So either my brain has stopped responding, or this makes less sense than Alessio Deleda's Formula 2 campaign. Anyway, he finished 16th of the 57 drivers, including a 5th place finish at the question mark international circuit. In that year, he also competed in one race of Italian Formula 3000, or Italian F4 or if you prefer, the 2005 Trofeo Nazionale CSAI Formula 3000 Italian Championship, where he finished P11 at the Mugello circuit. And I know how off-topic this video is getting since I've said 640 words and done one year of his career, so let's continue. In 2006, he did one round of the A1 GP series in China, finishing nowhere near the points, but in 2006 his main campaign was Formula Renault NEC. Well, I mean, he competed three rounds, but what However, he was again towards the tail end of the pack, with the best finish of P13. After not racing in anything in 2007 for whatever reason, in 2008 he joined the Spanish Formula 3 Championship for Round 4 in Valencia, where he picked up a handful of points such as P7 in Jerez, but that only placed him P18 in the championship. And unfortunately for him, there weren't too many excuses for that, since the only other driver on the grid I'd actually heard of was Roberto Mary. 2009 looked good. On his very reliable Wikipedia page, it said he was P10 in the British Formula 3 Championship he raced in. But no, that was P10 in the national class of 10 drivers. Although incredibly boring fact, only two of the drivers in the national class were actually from Britain. To be fair on him, he did only compete in one round and he did retire from one of those two races, but that excuse didn't work for Matteo Mirage, who also competed in one round, retiring from one race. 
In 2010, Ma Xinghua competed in one round of Super League formula, which is basically a mixture of football and motorsport. I'll leave a link to Moto Meerkat's video on it in the description. Whereas you'd expect Ma was nowhere near the front, it also means that Ma has so far never actually competed a full season in motorsport yet, and when he has raced in something, he's been further off the pace than me in league racing. Formula 1 talent in the making? Yeah. 2011, he went to compete in his home country, racing in the 1600cc class of the China Touring Car Championship for Beijing Hyundai, where he won the championship. Simple as that, there is literally no information on it other than he won the title, with three wins. His extremely impressive career so far, not, somehow impressed a Formula 1 team, and in 2012, Ma Qinghua became a test and reserve driver for the best team in Formula 1 ever, HRT. That thing bleeding to the, you know what I mean? Walky slash. <laughs> He got to test an HRT car at Silverstone that year, and apparently he cried after it. And this could have been down to a number of reasons. He could have cried because he was scared like he was in the indoor go-kart centre. He could have cried because he knew that not only was he driving an F1 car, but he was the first from his country to do so. Or the more likely option, he cried because of how crap the car was. Later in 2012, Xinghua unfortunately got to drive the HRT in four practice sessions at Monza, Singapore, Abu Dhabi and Kota, where in Monza, he said a 131.239, which not only was 2 seconds off his teammate and roughly 3 seconds slower than a Formula 2 car, but 7 seconds off fastest man Michael Schumacher. And I say how you couldn't really judge his driving because he was driving the single seater equivalent of a Tata Nano, but he was still 2 seconds off his teammate. A bit like I said how you couldn't really judge him, HRT didn't and HRT then signed Ma Qinghua to drive in Formula 1 for them in 2013 making him the first ever full-time Formula 1 driver for Ch from China, almost. You see, throughout this time, HRT had had big financial issues, and as we all know, HRT collapsed after 2012, meaning his Formula 1 seat disappeared like Sean Galile disappeared from Formula 2. I need to stop making Sean Galile jokes in my videos. However, this was strange of why they signed him. His only good result was in CTCC, and the competition there wasn't special. And I mean, he could have been a pay driver, but that wouldn't have made sense either, but since if he had money, A, his racing career may have started with something more prestigious than a local indoor karting centre, and B, maybe he would have completed a full season of something in motorsport if he had money. But who knows? HRT collapsed, nothing ever happened. However, Ma was then immediately signed as a test driver for Caterham F1 team, and with this they landed him a seat in 2013 GP2 with Caterham Racing. However, this didn't quite work out. GP2 could have been good for Ma, he could have learnt a lot. But round 1 in Malaysia. He qualified 20th out of 26 drivers, which could be worse, although he was 8 tenths off his teammate Sergio Canamasas in 12th. The race. Towards the end of the race, Ma's lap times started dropping into the 2 minutes, when the average lap time was in the 149s. He finished the race somehow and went to the medical team, where he was diagnosed with gastroenteritis, aka Tsinghua caught a tummy bug at the weekend, and as a result wouldn't start the sprint race. A few weeks later, Caterham let him drive FP1 in the 2013 Chinese Grand Prix, his home race. As his previous record, no one was really expecting much. As you got, Ma Jinghua slotted into a great 22nd place, 1.5 off teammate and professional joker Liedo van der Gaard, and 6.8 seconds off Nico Rosberg. Wonderful. After this, and his GP2 weekend, Caterham decided to immediately fire him, replacing him with Alexander Rossi, who then got a podium on debut in GP2. There it went, Mars F1 hope gone just like that. He would have been in F1 had it not been for HRT running out of money, but that's how the world is. After this F1 failure, Ma set his sights on Touring Car again, but this time, the World Touring Car Championship. In 2014, he made his WTCC debut at one of the worst tracks in the world, Moscow Raceway. He took P6 in his first ever race and then won race 2, making him the first ever Chinese driver to win an FIA race. He wasn't the best car, driving a Citroen, but that is not bad for a debut. He returned for a few other rounds in the year, 
where he had some disappointing results, but then took P2 in the China 2 round in Shanghai. He then signed a contract with Citroen to race for the whole 2015 season, and it was a good one. Alongside rally legend Sebastian Loeb, Jose Maria Lopez and even Muller, racing a Citroen badged Peugeot, which is still faster than the HRT I might add, he finished P4 overall. He did not beat any of his teammates, but he still picked up 5 podiums and a win, so still not bad, and it seemed that he had found his pace, only taking him 10 years, but also this year he made his Formula E debut. But since in this video I've already spoken at 1807 words, I'm going to hand over to the man who got ratioed by Josh Revel, because that's much more important than the fact he has 33,000 subscribers. It's John Warren. Qinghua began his time in Formula Hoover in just its second season in 2015. He joined Team Maguri from round 7, and while it should be mentioned that Team Maguri was hardly the best team on the grid, Ma failed to score a point in the four races he took part in. Nevertheless, he went on to compete in his second season in the sport the following year in 2016, this time signing with new kids on the block to Cheetah for the first three rounds of the season. None of these three races would bring him any joy, however, retiring from the first of them and failing to score points from the others, which caused him to be sacked from Cheetah just like he was from Caterham in 2013, since he couldn't match the pace of who was on the other side of the garage, jean Eric Verne, who scored points in the second round at a podium on the third, indicating quite how slow Ching Hua was. Admittedly, given his results in other championships, we should have seen this coming, but even so, it did beg the question as to whether or not he was ready for the step up to anything better than the glorified Dysons, in turn really beginning to worry me how this guy was almost an F1 driver in 2013. In 2017, Ching Hua competed entirely in Tour cars, racing in three series, none of which could afford him more than 15th in the championship. Again, not the markings of a future Formula 1 driver in my humble opinion. Qinghua also had another stab at a Formula E seat in the latter half of the 2017-18 season, where he unsurprisingly didn't score a point in either of his two races, although again he was driving for one of the worst teams on the grid, so it was to be expected. In 2018, F1 saw the introduction of the Halo, but Ma still didn't see the introduction of a good result, competing in the World Touring Car Cup and the World Rallycross Championship. To be fair to him, these are two of the most difficult series in the world, so it's not all bad, but even so, he didn't exactly show anyone he deserved to be in a Formula 1 car. It should also be mentioned that Ma didn't have a full season in either of these championships, so I shouldn't be too hard on him. Yeah. He returned to the World Touring Car Cup in 2019, this time competing in every round of the season and finishing a respectable 16th, with 133 points to his name, helped by a win in Slovakia and three second place finishes across the season. In what remains to be his final season in Formula E to date, Qinghua once again competed in a few rounds, of course not aided by the fact that he lives in China, meaning this thing, I, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called coronavirus, it meant he couldn't continue the season, but in the rounds he did feel like participating in, he again scored no points and again managed to find himself in the worst car on the grid. These five races including him half the time being more than a second off his teammate and then this rather special crash at Santiago, but it's almost like he has a talent for ending up in slow cars, so maybe he'll end up driving for Haas in the near future, providing Daddy Mazepin allows it to happen of course. Thank you, John. After this, in 2020, he then returned to a Chinese touring car, racing a Lincoln Co. 03, which I could give you money if you've heard of that car before. Anyway, he won the title by 23 points, where in the 12 races, he won 4 of them and finished on the podium in a further 4 of them. However, only 2 people in his class actually completed all of the races, so it was easier for him to win. But still, a championship is a championship. I say that, but that's like saying Guilherme Samaya is a good driver because he won Brazilian F3. Anyway, I think that Martin Qua is an average driver. His Formula E season and Season 6 of Formula Dyson was, let's be honest, embarrassing. But he has shown pace in touring car, being a two-time CTCC champion champion and he was P4 on WTCC. I'd like to have seen what he could have done in F1, but if HRT didn't go bust, we couldn't really see if he's any good or not since he'd be driving an HRT. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already since it would really help me with my goal of 1000 subscribers. But with that, I'm Daniel, have a nice day.